Comrades, we'll move on now. Uh, we have a number of very important uh, speakers. With other aspects of this uh, debate, Claire will be the next speaker. Uh, we will have uh, 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 Peter Haddon uh, speaking then, particularly in relation to the, this new development of the agreement in, in St Andrews between the parties in Northern Ireland and the implications of that for the uh, labour movement in the north and on, this, uh, and, on, on these uh, islands. Uh, followed by uh, uh, Philip. Uh, but uh, uh, Claire will be next, as uh, probably most comrades know, most people here know. Claire is a long time councillor for the uh, Socialist Party, leading shop steward uh, in, the, the, in Aer Lingus with the SIP2 union at uh, Dublin Airport, and uh, the candidate for the Socialist Party in Dublin North in past elections, but most importantly in the coming election in six are uh, seven months and uh, uh, an activist who has obviously played an outstanding role in the labour movement in this uh, country. So, Claire. Yeah. Well, comrades, as uh, Lucy was speaking, I, the expression short straw kind of leapt to mind because it is. Uh, a hard act to follow given the events and the work of the comrades in uh, Germany over the past period. And I think that Lucy's contribution really demonstrated a couple of things. On the one hand, it, it clearly showed that there is a need for new mass workers' parties. But I think more importantly, she showed graphically that it's the attacks on jobs and working conditions dictated by the neoliberal agenda. That's the backdrop and the reason, if you like, why it's absolutely inevitable that workers and young people will be forced in the direction of forming and developing such parties. I think not only that, but such formations and the need for them will emerge very, very quickly once workers begin to engage in struggle. And that's the lesson from everywhere, really, at the moment. The other lesson is that the CWI in Ireland and internationally doesn't just sit back and wait for these events to happen or drop from the sky, and then we'll trot along and say, right, lads, now that you've organised, we're going to join uh, the party and all the rest of it. That is not the tradition that we come from. Without exception, we have been to the forefront in working alongside other left-wing activists and trade unionists in developing these mass workers' parties when the opportunities are posed. And I think in the context of Ireland, we are under no illusion whatsoever that such a party in Ireland would massively transform the situation that exists at the moment and would be get, if you like, a massive response from uh, ordinary people. And I think Bertie's recent difficulties give us an illustration uh, of that point, because when Joe wrote his letter, or wrote Bertie's letter for him, uh, at the height of poor Bertie's recent uh, troubles, he ended it with Bertie warning Paddy the Plaster to stay away from Callalee's house because Ivor was in enough trouble already with the painter. Now that wasn't just a good one-liner, it was obviously a very good one-liner, but it wasn't just that, because what it did in that one sentence really, and what Joe did, was cutting through all the nonsense that surrounded this issue. This wasn't about Bertie Ahern's personal life, or was it a loan, or was it a gift? Did he pay tax, or did he not? Did he appoint his, his friends to the board because they were friends, or they gave him money? And all the nonsense that uh, went with them. It exposed the real issue that the Ahern crisis wasn't an isolated event at a moment of weakness in Bertie's personal life. Really what it exposed, and Joe's comments demonstrated it graphically, the fact that Bertie Ahern and Fianna Fáil are absolutely wedded to big business. They're bound to them by a thousand threads. And it's not only that, you know, these people are feathering their own nests. Obviously, that's reprehensible in and of itself, but it's not just because of that. It's that in doing that, they're impacting on the lives and living standards of ordinary working people. And that's not an accident. The two are absolutely directly linked. The very fact that young people are shackled to mortgages for 40 and 50 years is precisely because the friends of Bertie and Brian Cowan on Fingal County Council and other councils facilitated the rezoning of land that made landowners and developers millionaires overnight. The fact that the people in Rossport are 
faced with uh, corridors of police every day in defence of a private multinational uh, is precisely because Fianna Fáil gave state assets to this company without receiving a penny. We could go on and on, people sitting in traffic as a result of rezoning scandals and so on. And Joe's intervention really summarised that and it got a phenomenal response from people. Now Joe is used to being in the headlines really in the media but I think the comrades will reflect that the calls and response they got from that time exceeded anything else that has occurred since his time in the Dáil. It was absolutely unparalleled and yet a week later the opinions polls show that despite everything that had gone on, Fianna Fáil went up 8% in the opinion polls um, to their highest level since 2002. And I think that opinion poll probably had a lot of people scratching their heads. How could that be? Is Ireland a, an acute medical phenomenon where a large percentage of the population suffer from acute schizophrenia and multiple personality disorders? I don't really think that that does reflect that because people were quite clear. Two thirds of people opposed what Bertie Ahern had uh, done. And the real reason, the real verdict of that uh, opinion poll was a verdict not on Bertie and the boys, but it was a, a, an opinion poll on the uh, opposition, a bit like Jim Glennon would say, the devil you know. And their ba basic point is, is that the opposition in all their terrain, including the likes of the Labour Party, are absolutely indistinguishable from Fianna Fáil. In that sense, people shrug their shoulders and say, well, what's the point? And as a result of that situation, we have an enormous vacuum in society. There is a lot of anger. There's a huge amount of opposition to what's going on. But there isn't a lot of confidence out there that things can be changed. And I think that really is the nub of the contradiction that exists in Ireland that we are attempting to grapple with.